Why hello everyone, today I'll be writing the performances of the drivers in F2 for the 2024 Austrian Grand Prix. Let me know if you agree and post your ratings in the comments below. Please like and subscribe also. Let's start with the ART team with Victor Martins. A four. Martins was so close to points all weekend but was just off it. He managed to get 15th in qualifying and approved in both races to 10th and 12th in the sprint and feature races respectively. The season is all but over for Martins now, as he'll likely leave at the next series, City currently 17th in the standings. His teammate, Zach O'Sullivan, gets a 5. It was a similar kind of showing for Martins teammate, but he did just everything slightly better. Still only good enough for one point as he got 10th in the feature, but that is okay given after qualifying he was 12th. Also got a 9th in the sprint race, 1 point, or 1 place off the points, so almost there, but not quite, so a 5 is all right. Now from the racing, with Oliver Behrman, he gets a seven. He finally started to do well. Showing decent speed to qualify ninth, which let him overtake Miney on the sprint race first lap. He strolled home to easily win, but then the feature race had issues after initially running well on the ultimate strategy and was looking to likely to score strong points. I'm lucky with the Mechachrome issues, but at least he is in a almost confirmed F1 seat next year so his results don't really matter and he showed a little bit of pace so it's still like I'm strong and I have a good good setup but this weekend I mean this whole series has been a bit of an L for him at least he's got an F1 seat basically his teammate as well also probably got an F1 seat and Drake Comiantinelli but he gets a 2 stalling is a problem for F1 cars as Sargent has shown us earlier in the season although he did qualify 16th for both races with no pace in the sprint to get any points. He ruined any chance through whatever strategy in the feature race as he stalled in the pit lane. It seems as if only one of Oliver Behrman or Kim Antonelli can do well in a given weekend, or neither of them, because either one's doing well, or the other one's doing well, or they're both doing poor. So there's no in-between of them both both doing well, so it's just Premier need to fix their issues soon. Now we have Rodin with Zane Maloney, who gets the first zero of his season. Maloney has gotten worse and worse and worse with each race since the double win sweep at Bahrain. And this was his worst by a margin. He qualified in 20th and that turned into a 17th in the sprint and 22nd in the feature race as he stalled at the start and eventually stopped the car. He is now more than a win off the top two and has slipped into the chasing pack. He needs to figure out what's going wrong quick and if he wants to kind of remain in the title flight because it's slipping out of his fingers faster than he can, he can yell, get me into F1. Return Miesha. Another zero. After a strong qualifying in Spain, it was not the same in Austria, as he dropped back to his usual place at the back of the grid, this time the 21st. This didn't prove good for the rest of the weekend, as he ended up a 22nd in the sprint, I was pitting for soft tyres and trying to sort out those pace issues going a lap down, and 19th in the feature race after retiring. Dams now with Jack Crawford, and a six. Just like Mieta, did not count for his qualifying form over from Spain. But still made up a lot of positions in the sprint to go from 14th to 6th in a great drive. A stall in the formation lap also ruined his feature race as he could only muster the pace to work up back to 11th. One no a career, a 1. A telling trend that only seemed like Bortolato, Aaron, Maney and Hajar could kind of carry their form over from the Spanish Grand Prix to Austria and Correa was one that did not. He broke his three point scoring races in a row streak in the sprint race, starting at 19th and working up to 16th. He made up one place more in the feature race to 15th, but still not a good weekend overall. Now in Victor with Kush Miney, now he gets a five. He'll be disappointed after he was unable to transfer a good sprint pole after finishing 10th in qualifying, dropping down the order after a bad getaway and weak pace to eventually claim seventh. In the feature race, a decision to pit a couple of laps later than everyone else proved costly, as on the main strategy cost him as well, as he fell down the 17th. It seemed like in the race you needed to pit earlier to kind of make up the track positions, it seemed a little bit more difficult to pass, as we kind of saw between Hadja and his teammate uh, Marty at the end there. Now we have his teammate Gabriel Bortoletto with a 9, he had strong qualified getting all the way up to 3rd 
in the most difficult qualifying of the year, given the length of the track being it difficult to have a marginal improvement. He converted that into a fourth for the sprint after some good overtakes and a superb win in the feature after Halga stalled the formation lap and he defended strongly from Hajar, Marty and Colapinto. He also dispatched Dirksen like a pro early on in the feature race. If he keeps this up, he could be soon in the race for the championship with Aaron and Hajar. So keep it up, Bortoletto, you're doing great. Now, MP Motorsport, Dennis Halger, the pole sitter, only a six. Despite qualifying a pole and making it five places to earn fifth in the sprint, he, like a few other drivers, stalled on the formation lap and had to have a pit lane start. He did work his way back up to 13th, we missed out on a ton of much needed points in the competitive chasing pack. Benko Colapinto gets a 7. Although he had a more difficult time in the sprint race, making his 4th qualifying be ruined by a spin caused by trying to get on the throttle too early in turn 3, which made him go out for a little bit and come back in down in the 11th. But he more than made up for it in the feature, as he was a high driver up the grid to opt for the alternate strategy, which he showed was exceptionally quick as he came back later on to overtake three cars to get up to second. That should put him right on the tail of Maloney in the championship and well in the fight for the championship if he keeps on showing this performance. The AR was then observed for the pole D. I'm going to give him a six. What a redemption though in the sprint race for Enzo. The rest of the weekend was a bit disappointing after 15th qualifying as there were no opportunities in the sprint race. But pitting earlier than everyone else allowed him to climb up to fifth, snatching the place of Aaron after Aaron's 5 second penalty. Rafa Villa Gomez, though, he only gets a 1. This could be the first and last season for Villa Gomez in F2, who currently sits last in the championship and doesn't look to dislodge himself from that place anytime soon. 18th in quality, the 19th and 16th in the races. He is 22 and older than most of the grid. Looking at him, you can kind of tell that he didn't do very well in F3 last year and didn't really deserve to be called up, so it was kind of coming for Villa Gomez. But the proof is in the pudding that pudding is so showing that he's not very good in F2, so this could be his last season. High tech with a more equal deal. I think a five is, is understandable. Uh, the unlucky driver of the week though to qualify 11th. And so it means you don't get that sprint race goal. Uh, but in the sprint race, he didn't do very well, he couldn't get off well from the start, and, then he, and dropped down all the way to 18th. It couldn't improve from there. The feature race allowed him to take the opposite strategy when he climbed up to a solid 8th position after being kind of like the second fastest in that second strategy after Colpinto. So it was a very good performance in the feature race, but it's a weekend overall, unspectacular, um, but it's still a strong performance for a driver who isn't expected a lot of much. Then Paul Aaron. Now he's built his expectations up so high over the rest of the season, being the most consistent driver by far in the championship. He gets an 8. Again, this kid can't do anything wrong, it seems. Even in off weekend, he still qualifies in fifth and gets a podium in the sprint race. And a sixth in the feature race after penalty for contact. I run out for good things to say, and it's just my superlatives cannot be fathomed. My my literature isn't as good enough to, to say all the words I want to say about this boy. He's just something special, and it would be a shame to not see him in F1 sometime and come soon. It shows how good he is, as Hedjar is willing to kind of ruin his reputation by not letting his teammate pass just to get three more points on the fella. So, Aaron is making the other boys sweat in the championship. Now we have Cam Potts with Isaac Hedger. I'm only going to give him a two. After begging his team to impart team orders and let Marty let him pass in the feature race for second, then he didn't make any time on Bottoletto like he promised, which meant that when it was time to switch the cars back, he refused to give the pace back, even after being overtaken by Cole Pinto. So he was going to get third, after overtaking his, his teammate by team orders, then refused to give the place back right before the end of the race. It's a disgrace if you ask me, and he effectively ruined his reputation for a podium and three more points in a tight championship. If I were Christian Horner, or any of the other Red Bull execs like Marco, I'd be watching this and be really disappointed in the kind of character and I'd have questions over his integrity. I know he got a podium, but he showed a lack of character, and it was honestly a disgrace for both Hadja and the team. He could have qualified on pole as he looked super quick, but he had engine issues instead of a 7th. Did not do well in the sprint, coming 12th, but his engines on Sunday leave a terrible taste in my mouth. And then Marty, I'll give a 9. He qualified in alright, 8th place, 
which was an improvement over the last couple of positions this weekend, they did not score since Jeddah. He did a great job to at the second sprint race. Then he should have had another podium in the feature race if it wasn't for his teammate, Hadja, just screwing him. And the team as well had to get some of the blame, but Hadja is the one in the car ultimately, and he was the one that decided not to give it back. A great weekend to propel him back up in the standings and keep his championship hopes alive, but given the gap, he needs to continue this form. And with the team screwing him, I'm not sure if he'll be able to. Trident with Richard Bashaw, I'll give a one. Uh, it's another point this weekend for Bashaw, who could not redeem his 17th qualifying as he got 20th in the sprint and retired from the feature. Monaco could have been his last and only hope for strong points all year if he keeps these kind of performances up. His teammate Roman Stanek, not anything better, with a zero. Last in qualifying, second to last in the sprint, then last of the finishes in the feature race. He took the win in the sprint now at Park, and, but since then he has dipped from the series, just outright said goodbye, I'm, I'm gone. I think he's scored one point since then, or a few points since then, but the rest of the time it's just been terrible, so he's gone. But at AIX Racing, I think, are the surprise packages of the last four races. They've shown really strong performance since switching from the other team names. So Joshua Dirksen gets a 7, a great qualifying left him in second place after a flash of a finish lap. And he turned that into a one point in the sprint, making up one place. Then he could not heal up very well in the feature with the front runners, but doing enough to keep hold of seventh. He would have been hoping for a bit more points given the status of the situation, but points are points, so I think he'd be generally happy. Could have been a six, but I liked his qualifying. Taylor Barnard gets a six. After a strong qualifying getting sick, he could not retain the fifth that ended him in the grid for the sprint and dropped down in the order to 12th. Managed to keep points in the feature as he got ninth. Not a terrible weekend, but AIX should be trying to improve their race pace because it's clear that their qualifying pace has improved significantly from the start of the season and they're doing really well. So the race pace is one to kind of improve on and kind of get set up in the cars during the one pack session they have in Friday morning. The qualifying is definitely competitive, so it's better, but still things to work on. These are my ratings, let me know what you think down in the comments below. Uh, thank you all for watching. If you like this video, please like and subscribe. Try and reach one and a half thousand subscribers. Peace.